This video will discuss our fourth quantum mechanical model system, the hydrogen atom. So for our hydrogen atom model, we have two particles. We have a proton of mass mp. We have an electron of mass me. The distance from the proton to the electron is this value r. So our proton is going to be fixed at the origin, and our electron is free to move anywhere in three-dimensional space in x, y, and z. The charge of our proton is plus E, and the charge of our electron is minus E, E being the magnitude of the charge of the electron, 1.602 times 10 to the 19th coulombs in SI units. Mass of the proton is 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Mass of the electron is about 2,000 times smaller than that, being 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So, as I said, the ratio of the mass of the proton to the mass of the electron is about 1800. So the proton is much, much heavier than the electron, which means it'll move much slower than it in response to the forces that they act upon one another with. So it really is the justification for putting our proton as fixed at the origin that the electron will just move much, much faster, having a similar kind of charge but a much smaller mass. And then we also look at the reduced mass of this system, and we can justify this as well. The reduced mass when you have one that weighs about 2,000 times more than the other. As we saw in the Rydberg formula example is 0 0.9995 times the mass of the electron. So the mass that we're using is almost exactly equal to the mass of the electron. And if we go ahead and just say our proton is fixed at the origin, then we can just go ahead and use mass of the electron instead of this reduced mass. Okay, so in order to solve for the wave functions and energies of this hydrogen atom model, we need to define our Hamiltonian operator. So the Hamiltonian, as in every case, is kinetic energy plus potential energy operator. So kinetic energy operator minus h bar squared over two times mass of the electron times del squared, del squared being the Laplacian operator in Cartesian coordinates in three dimensions, that's just the sum of the second partial derivative with respect to x, y, and z. But it's more natural for us to use a wave function which is in spherical polar coordinates here. So our Laplacian is going to be in spherical polar as well in terms of the values r, theta, and phi. So the Laplacian is much more complicated looking in spherical but it's going to be much easier to express our wave functions and energies in terms of r, theta, and phi and that rather than x, y, z. So the Laplacian is del squared equals 1 over r squared, partial with respect to r, quantity r squared d d r, plus 1 over r squared sine theta, partial with respect to theta of quantity sine theta d d theta, plus 1 over r sine squared so, sorry, 1 over r squared sine theta, second derivative with respect to phi. For our potential energy, our potential energy is defined by the Coulomb potential. These are both charged particles. They interact with one another through the Coulomb force, and their potential energy is the Coulomb potential. So that's dependent on the distance that they are apart. So V of r equals Q1 times Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught times r, epsilon naught being the permittivity of free space, which is equal to 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per joules times meters. So the charge of the proton plus e, charge of the electron, negative e, that gives us a negative e squared on top, minus over 4 pi epsilon naught r is our distance between them. So our Hamiltonian operator for our hydrogen atom model system is going to be minus h bar squared over 2 times mass of the electron times del squared in spherical polar coordinates minus charge of the electron e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught times the distance between the proton and the electron. So since as I mentioned our potential is a potential that depends on r, it doesn't depend on x, y, or z but only the distance between our electron and our proton, it's more natural to express our wave function as a function of r theta phi, as a function of these spherical polar coordinates. 
So the Schrodinger equation we're going to be solving for this is h psi equals e psi, as always. Here's our Hamiltonian operator. Our psi is a psi of r theta phi, and we have h psi equals e psi, which we'll take a look at the energy levels and wave functions for in the coming few videos.